first, number one, an entire new version of iLife, iLife 09. Now, hopefully a lot of you know that iLife has become one of the reasons people buy a Mac today, as we all use these incredible applications. They're so helpful, they're so useful and fun. iPhoto, iMovie, GarageBand, iWeb, iDVD, there's nothing like it on any other computer platform. And as much as some people up north might think that they have some things that are pretty good, there's nothing as good as iLife on a personal computer. So what's new in iLife 09? First up, a brand new version of iPhoto, iPhoto 09. Last year, we introduced an idea to a technology in iPhoto called events. So not only could you see the thousands of, photo in that photo, of your photos in iPhoto, you could look at them by events. And that took thousands of photos and made it down to a manageable couple hundred events because they're based on time, a birthday party you attend, a vacation you go on. And it's turned out to be incredibly useful Customers use it, love it. It's just a, a natural, intuitive way to use all your photos. Well, this year with iPhoto 09, we're adding two events, another way for you to manage your photos called faces. It's really powerful. So, so many of the photos we take are of people we care about, our family, our friends, coworkers. Wouldn't it be great if iPhoto allowed you to organize your photos down around all your favorite people so it's really easy to get and find whatever you want? Well, that's what's in iPhoto 09. We've added a new feature in your library called Faces. And it's really beautiful. When you click on Faces, you get this great new user interface. It's a corkboard with snapshots of all your favorite people. If you want to find their photos, you just go into their snapshot, and there they are. It's really cool. How does it work? Well, Faces uses a technology called face detection. Yes. So when you go into an event, for example, this is a camping event, and I click on a picture, there's a new button on the bottom that says, name this person. Because iPhoto wants you to tell, tell it who, who these people are. And face detection finds the face in the photo so that you can then click on it and type in the name. We'll say this is Liz. And that's it. That's all you have to do to tell iPhoto whose face you want to track in the faces feature. So when you go back to Faces now, now Liz has a snapshot in your Faces area of iPhoto. iPhoto has another technology called face recognition to not only find the faces in your photo, but find the same person across multiple photos. So how does that work? Well, you go into Liz's snapshot, and what you see up above is the, the picture where you confirmed, yes, that's Liz in that picture. Down below, iPhotos looked through your photo library and found some other photos that it thinks might be Liz and is asking you just to confirm that so it knows how to find Liz across all your different photos. That's face recognition. And all you have to do is just single click on some of them and say, yeah, those are Liz. Or if you want, double click on a photo that isn't Liz to say that's not. And that extra help really helps iPhoto out a lot to do a great job finding all your photos of the person you're tracking. Now, there's no perfect face detection and face recognition in anyone's software, but this is the best technology we've found. We think it works really well, and it's incredibly easy to use. So that's Faces. I think you're going to love using it in iPhoto. Well, in addition to events and faces, we're adding a third way to help you find all your favorite photos. It's called Places. So now we're adding faces and places. A lot of the photos, in fact, all of them are of places, right? They're places we visit, places we go on vacations and trips. And it wouldn't be great if iPhoto can organize your photos around where they were taken. And that's just we've added, also in the library, under events, under faces, we've added places. And when you click on places, what do you see? You see a map. And that map has pins where all your photos were taken. I mean, it couldn't be any easier than that. So how does Places work? Places uses a technology called GPS geotagging. Well, GPS chips were finding in more and more things. In fact, they're starting to make their way into cameras. So new cameras like this Nikon Coolpix and the most advanced cell phone on the market, 
hopefully many of you have one, it's the iPhone, it also has a GPS chip in it. And both of these devices embed a geotag right into the photos you take. Well, what's a geotag? It's really simple. It's a big word for longitude and latitude. So for example, when you take a photo, the geotag is automatically assigned by that camera or by the iPhone to the photo you took. Now, it's not that useful to know that I took this photo at 48 degrees, 51 minutes, 33.14 seconds north. So the other thing iPhoto does, it reverse encodes that geotag, and it figures out, well, that's actually at the Eiffel Tower. In fact, it figures out more about it. It's the Eiffel Tower, and that's the city in Paris, and that's in the country of France. And you have access to all that information to use to search your photos or organize them any way you'd like. Now, I know you're probably wondering, well, what about all those photos I took that I didn't have a GPS chip in a camera and it doesn't have a geotag in it? Well, that's easy, too. So, for example, let's go into this backpacking event. Maybe it's something we did back in 2007. We didn't have a GPS chip in our camera. Well, now when you click on the event, there's a little information button, you flip over the event, and there's a new field up there that says, enter event location. And you just type in where you went on that event. In this case, Yosemite. Well, iPhoto has a database of thousands of locations. It recognizes what you're typing in and figures out that's Yosemite, a great national park in California. It puts a pin on the map right where that is, and it assigns a geotag to all the photos in that event. That simply. So it's really easy for you to add a location to your entire database of photos if you want them all to be placed on the map for you. So where do these maps come from? We actually um, are getting the maps from the Google Map Service. And so if you've ever used Google Maps on the web, you know exactly how to use this map. You double click on it to zoom in, and go right down to street level and see to the individual street where you were taking those photos. And at any time on the map, when you see a pin, you can just click on it, and it'll take you to where you've seen your photos. Oh, in addition to street maps, we also have satellite imagery as well. So you can see satellite images. Again, click on a pin, and you go right to the photos taken at that location. And because this is places, it has all the photos you've taken, even if they're across different events, because it's about a place now. So that's places. So places joins faces. It's a brand new feature in iPhoto. Now those two things would be enough right there. Those are great, powerful new features. In addition, we've added a lot more depth and power to iPhoto. I want to mention a, a few other things. We have support for some online services. If you use Facebook or Flickr, that's built right in. So how does that work? Well, for example, maybe you have a picture or a few of your friends. And of course, you've used faces in iPhoto, so there's some faces of the people you know have been assigned to them. And if you have your Facebook account set up, you just click the new Facebook button right there at the bottom of iPhoto, and it sends the photo right up to Facebook for you to share with your friends. One of the cool things is Facebook allows other people to name people in the photos if they know who they are, even if you don't. So let's say the person on the far right, you didn't know who that was. One of your friends can, in Facebook, assign that name, and it gets synced right back down to your iPhoto, and you get that name, too. So that's Facebook. We also have support for Flickr. Flickr is a great service where thousands and thousands of beautiful photos are shared, and, and you can do the same thing. So maybe you've had this photo of this scenery that you want to share up on with the world up on Flickr. There's a button built right into iPhoto. You click it and share your photo up onto Flickr, and now it's there with your Flickr account for everyone to look at. But what's really cool is Flickr also supports geotagging. So it reads the data that we send up from iPhoto, and people can see the places where you took your photos all automatically, built in with geotags. So that's Facebook and Flickr support. Now, once you have all your photos in there, it's really easy with events or places or faces to do a lot of really fun things. One of the simple fun things to do is to show them to other people via a slideshow. So we have a great new feature called Slideshow Themes. So when you go to pick an event, let's say, for example, this ballet um, practice on the bottom left-hand side, you want to took some photos at your child's ballet uh, practice, and you want to go in and, and show that class, you just click it and press the slideshow button, and a new panel shows up. We can not only assign music to your slideshow and set timing, 
but you can pick one of the built-in themes, and they're really beautiful. 